All right, guys. So in the midst of this, um, with strong people, um, one of the things I, I, that we want to do is continue to bring in outside voices and uh, outside uh, people and friends and this, that, and the other. And so most, pe most businesses right now, they're thinking about survival. They're not thinking about training. They're not thinking about leadership development. They're not thinking about all that stuff. Um, but, but we're going to, strong people is a commitment to that. Um, this meeting's expensive, by the way. Like you take your salary, everybody's salaries, and you divide it by an hour. Uh, this is an expensive meeting. Um, and it's the best expense that we have um, because uh, it's about investment. Uh, and the ROI is next level. And so I want to introduce uh, one of my good friends. Brad, you can go ahead and unmute yourself uh, if you are not. Brad, um, Martino and I met. Um, his brother is uh, one of the founders of Infusionsoft. And so uh, Scott Martineau and um, Brad and I met in the Infusionsoft world. How long ago was it, Brad? It was, uh, let's see, you won in 2011? No, 2013. Yep. yep. 2013, some bald dude got up on stage, talked about a red pickup truck, something like that. You guys may have heard that story before. Yep. And uh, so we won uh, what was called Infusionsoft Marketer of the Year Award. And then we met Brad and we started a relationship. And I was in a mastermind with Brad, with other entrepreneurs and other CEOs. And here's the thing about Brad, guys. Um, he owns a couple of businesses, uh, two that I know of, probably more that I don't know of, um, um, Sixth Division, and plus this. Um, he, he can tell you a little bit more about what those are. Um, he, as a business person, is a genius. And Renee can attest to that as well. She's shaking her head right now. The better part about him is he is a great human being. Like, I learned my daddy-daughter trips from Brad. Uh, I learned uh, being a parent. You want to you follow somebody that's an excellent parent is Brad Martineau. Uh, somebody that's an excellent spouse. Somebody that, uh, I mean, his family. So he's a, good, he's, a, he's a good business person. He's a better human being. And so I wanted to bring him on today. Uh, in the midst of all of this, we had this plan in advance, but um, I think it's going to be huge. Brad's one of my good friends. Uh, we were in a mastermind together. And so, Brad, I'm going to let you take it from here. Do your intro spiel, whatever, and you take it forward. Guys, y'all give it up for Brad Martineau with some – let's give him some snaps. Let's give him some snaps. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, hey, everybody. I am uh, – I'm pumped to be here. I'm going to share my screen. Um, I threw together some slides. I also may flip up on the dry erase board behind me. Um, I'm actually not going to do much of an intro on myself. So I'll give you 30 seconds. My name is Brad Martineau. I've got five kids, 18 down to 10. Uh, I've been married for 19 years as of this past February. Uh, I got two businesses, six division. We help people design and implement better client journeys so they can get more clients, less time, less energy. Uh, and I got a software company called Plus This. It's about all you need to know. I wear hats all the time and I love to play basketball. So now you pretty much know me. We're like lifelong friends. That's basically the way this works. Okay, um, I'm going to share my screen. I want to spend uh, all the time I have just sharing something with you that I believe uh, is the key to getting whatever you want in life. And I mean that literally. This isn't one of those like theoretical, like I'm going to throw something up and it's all bull crap and like fluffy. Uh, this is a tool that I use every day, like every single minute of every single day uh, to get what I want. So let me share my screen here real quick. And we're going to roll through. Uh, we're going to go through this. So can you guys all see? You should see your logo on there. Yes, we had some head nods. Okay, cool. So uh, let me run through just a couple of things if I can get my all right, navigating zoom. Here we go. Anybody ever felt like this before? I don't know this is fairly timely. Yeah, we got some head nods. Okay. Um, how about maybe because there's like a bunch of voices that go on that are like, hey, you should do this, or you should do this, or you should do this, or maybe you've got these voices inside your head, for any of you that have seen the movie Inside Out, right? Maybe you got some of that going on. Or maybe sometimes you felt like, oh, yeah, and then I ran into this thing called the brick wall. We're on the same page, yeah? We've got, we got some chuckles and some smiles. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about what I believe is the single most important tool to help uh, manage and navigate that and beat it in our life. Because what I found is when we are operating in any of these states, we are at a decreased capacity to go serve other people. And it's because of this statement is true. Uh, I heard this, I don't even remember where I heard this, but I believe that this is such a powerful statement. Anxiety lives in the space between alternatives. 
Now, normally I talk really fast and Casey and Renee can attest to this. I'm gonna attempt to slow down. I want this to sink in. Anxiety lives in the space between alternatives. What that means is, it means when we are in a spot where we have multiple things that we could do and we are not clear on what we are going to do, we are inviting anxiety into our lives. So let that sink in. Any time, in any aspect of our life, that we have things that we could do, we have not identified what we are going to do, we have created a seedbed, a hotbed for anxiety to come in, and then the irony is we have the audacity to wonder where it came from. Like, we invited it in. It's like, hey, welcome, come into my house, come into my life, right? So here's the antidote, okay? In one word, the antidote is this, decide. It's deciding. Now notice, I did not say decisions. I said decide. I believe that what's more important than the decisions that we make is the process by which we get to those decisions because that I can continually improve and I will be doing for the rest of my life. So what I wanna to talk today about are just some principles that I've learned, um, some principles I've learned in my life about how to decide and how to do it better. Because behind, or before rather, everything that we ever do, we have to decide. Before Casey started Gravy, he had to decide to start it. Before he decided to hire all of you, he had to decide to start it. Before you decided to show up and do your work, you have to decide to do it. Before you decide to show up powerfully and to serve powerfully and to get your hands dirty, you've got to decide. There is not a single thing that you've ever done in your life, or I have ever done in my life, where I didn't first decide. The key is making the decision or making the process of deciding be powerful and be intentional. So I just want to go through uh, a couple of points that uh, my, here's what my hope is. My hope is number one, you'll see yourself with an increased capacity to decide more powerfully as you move forward, number one. Uh, and then number two, my hope is that you may have um, decisions that are looming in front of you that you have been stalling on or waffling on. And my hope is that we're going to provide some clarity on that. And then depending on where the conversation goes, because this is more about you, we may get in a little bit to how you can help other people learn how to decide, namely your children and other people that you're around. Okay, here's where I see it fitting into the gravy picture. So I heard a rumor you guys believe in these things or something. Um, all right, so I like to make jokes, sorry. Uh, and I love it. Like everything that you talked about, it's like, yeah, I, I could work here. I could get totally on board with every single thing that's on here. I believe that what we're gonna talk about primarily impacts these two. Uh, gravy's on a mission, return a billion dollars or some small number or whatever to small businesses. Um, and we've got these five core principles that we guide. And I wanna talk about how Decide fits into those two, but also um, this is not just about gravy. This is about you. You have a vision for what you want your life to be. Gravy is uh, a train, a pun intended, right? A train that you're riding right now for as long as it serves you and where you're going. So I also want you to be considering your thing. So I got a couple of housekeeping items that will help this go better. And I believe help you get more value out of this. Number one, uh, we're here. So let's be here. You got Corona going on. You've got kids running around the house to the extent that you can shut off all distractions you have control over. So if you have your phone on and it vibrates, power it down. If you've got any other messaging things going on, shut them down, uh, just be here with me. Number two, I do have gifts for you, meaning I've got a summary of this. I believe this is being recorded, so you don't need to worry about being a scribe of everything we go through. And I've got some additional stuff uh, I wanna give you. I got a chapter of a book that I wrote that applies directly to this, plus a deeper dive training I can give you if you wanna get more of this. So you don't have to capture all of it. You can sort of relax your brain. And then the last thing is understand the process of learning. There's material, I'm gonna cover some today. There's lessons that we pull out of it that we can apply to everybody. And then there's application to you. The power is in the application to you. It would be a waste if all you did was transcribe what I put on my slides. I can give you my slides. It would also be a waste if all you did was come out with some platitudes or general cliches that you could go spout and apply to people. The real power is in how does this apply to you specifically? So. Whatever you have for note taking, there are three things. I would create three sections if you have a piece of paper, three sections on your paper, and these are the sections. Number one, lessons that I want to remember, not material. I'll give you the slides, you can have them. Number two, how this applies to me specifically. I want you to be taking notes of like, and when you write in how this applies to me specifically, this will be like nobody else could possibly have this note. It only applies to Alicia or Layla or John or Amber. It only applies to you specifically. And then lastly, at the end of this, have a section for, here's what I will do this week based on what we talked about today. 
And then as we go through, uh, I teach a Sunday school class in church. I've got five kids. I'm not afraid of awkward silence. There will be interaction back and forth as we go through this. So I'm going to stop and I'll ask for questions and I'm not afraid to just hang out and wait. So just throwing that out there for you. All right. Here, uh, in summary, I'm going to lead with the punchline. This is what the entire presentation or my entire sort of thesis is about. Decide ruthlessly, execute humanly. This is the fundamental principle and truth behind how to decide powerfully is to learn and to train yourself to decide ruthlessly and then execute humanly. And I want to talk a little bit about sort of the, the, uh, how those kind of seem like they oppose each other, but how they come together to create powerful deciding. Okay, decide ruthlessly, execute humanly. So first, let's start with this, uh, this part about deciding ruthlessly. And my objective is, I'm gonna kind of go through the material pretty quickly. Uh, I wanna leave as much time as possible just for some discussion around it. So here's a truth about deciding and about deciding ruthlessly. Uh, deciding can be hard. Raise your hand if you agree with that. Okay, so we know that to be true. Um, here's the other side of that truth. Still has to be done. Raise your hand if you recognize that. Okay, so what I, like, the reason why this is on there is important for us to train our mind to recognize that just because a decision's hard doesn't mean that we're absolved of the responsibility to decide. It just means that it's hard, period. Okay, so that's sort of truth uh, sandwich number one. Uh, truth number two, some decisions I make will disappoint other people. Raise your hand if you know that to be true. It will. If you are still under the delusion in any way whatsoever that you can navigate your life, and I was for a long time, I'm going to tell you the story that broke it for me. This is like in the last year, I finally realized this. If you're still under the delusion that you can go through life and you can make powerful decisions and you can lead and never disappoint somebody else, I am sorry, but you are naive and you need to wake up. Okay. Some decisions I make will disappoint other people. Here's the other side of that truth. We'll call this a truth sandwich. But if it's the right decision, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go back. I want those two together, but there would have been too much on the slides. Some decisions I make will disappoint other people. Truth. If it's the right decision, it doesn't matter. Truth. Here's the deal. Disappointment fades. Good decisions don't. Disappointment fades. Good decisions don't. Let me tell you, let me tell you a little story. Okay, so this was my house for about six months. So I got a couple of businesses, things were going well. My wife and I were like, hey, we're gonna go build our dream house. So I'm not gonna go through all the pictures. This house was uh, about 6,000 square feet. You walk in that front door, it goes into ceilings that vault up to 24 feet. Uh, it's got a five car garage. It's on two thirds of an acre in like the most prime real estate in Gilbert, Arizona. We're tucked back on the right hand side over here. That little fence is the edge of the neighborhood. We're at the end of a turn. There's like no backyard neighbors and there's nobody on the other side of the fence. There's a big old empty lot that no one was going to live on forever. Like we, it was a friggin' dope house. So it took like two and a half years to build it. I'll skip you the story of why it took a long time to build it. Lots of planning. It wasn't a custom home, but we convinced them to customize a whole bunch of stuff. Here's my point. There was a lot of me and my wife's soul and energy that went into this house and dreams. Um, about, Six months before we moved in, I just started to get this feeling like, hmm, remind me again why we're going to 5X our mortgage and then add, I mean, so we were going to move in, our furniture, we could kind of take over, but like this is a house that you buy and then you deck it out and then you deck out the backyard, right? So I'm looking at this, I'm like, I just signed up for another, to do the inside right, probably half a million, three quarters of a million dollars of furniture and decoration and everything. And then on top of that, to do the backyard right, probably another half. Like, I just signed up for another million to 1.2 million before I ever start getting forward financially. And my oldest daughter was 16, which means she's going to be out of the house when she's 18. So we had all these plans about how all of our grandkids and everyone's going to come live. I'm like, wait a minute. My kids are starting to leave my house. Why am I, why am I doing this? Anyway, uh, we decided to move in. We sold the house that we were in. After three months we were in, it became clear to me that the right decision was that we needed to get out of this house. Now, for all of you men, I want you to like put yourself into my situation if you're married or in a relationship. This was three years of building my wife's dream house. I've got five kids. Uh, everything was perfect about this house. And then I was gonna say, hey, it's time to go. Now, women, I want you to put, yeah, Alicia's like, oh boy, you'd be dead. I don't know if she just looked over at her husband or whatever. She's like, you'd be dead, right, okay? So 
women on the other side, I want you to look at the situation that my wife's in. And like, anyway, point is, is if we want to talk about hard decisions, this was a really, really, really hard decision. Um, anyway, I talked to my wife and uh, I want to be really clear. She was 100% disappointed. 100% disappointed. Um, I don't know that she liked me for a while. Um, but I want to remind you of this statement. Disappointment fades. Good decisions don't. So we stayed there for 90 days. We were under contract with the builder. We were supposed to stay there for a year. We had to pay him a bunch of money. Luckily, we were able to write a letter, negotiate our way out of this house, put it up on the market. It took 90 days to sell. We lost over six figures when we sold it. There's no way we should have. It took three years and the market was appreciating. And I was still happy to walk away, bite it, eat it, and get the heck out of there because it was the right decision. And I realized that Corona could be like, oh, see, it's totally the right decision. It was the right decision well before Corona hit. We are now in a house, like the amount of buffer we have and the amount of flexibility we have is insane. And if I had let the fear of disappointing other people influence that decision, I would be in a really crappy spot right now. Do not let the potential disappointment of others impact making the right decision. Okay, here's what I found. If anything is off, meaning if I feel like this or like this or like this, I am most likely delaying a decision. And if I'm delaying a decision, it is probably because I'm trying to avoid disappointing someone. Okay, so here's what you do. Train your brain to do this. Identify where you need to decide. This is an important critical step all by itself. Identify where you need to decide. Um, and let me see. Who, I don't remember who made the first comment. I apologize. I didn't get notes written down about everything is uncertain, but I feel more certain. Do you know where certainty comes from? Deciding. That's where certainty comes from. So in this situation, there's a certain amount of certainty that you have picked up as a company because your leader decided to decide. You do not have to let other people create certainty for you. You can create your own certainty by deciding. So one, you have to train your brain to notice when things are off and recognize that ought to be an immediate trigger that says, oh, I'm not deciding something. What is it? Because your brain isn't aware where you're not deciding. Your brain just becomes aware of the problem. So one is identify where you need to decide. And then two is decide ruthlessly and without emotion. This is hard because we're humans. You have to decide ruthlessly without emotion. Here's what without emotion means. It means I don't care about the collateral damage. And my guess is based on the group that's on this call, you're starting to be like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I don't like the turn that this took. Bear with me. Trust me. It'll all work out. It'll all work out. We're not done yet. But without emotion means I don't care about the collateral damage. Let me just repeat this. Identify where you need to decide. This is, and this is not a, oh, I did it one time. I'm good. You are training your brain to be this process. It's like anything starts to be off. Okay, what have I not decided? What am I holding on to that I need to not hold on to? I've got to decide. And then when I go to decide, I decide ruthlessly without emotion. Without emotion means I don't care about the collateral damage. Okay. Then decide from that place what you're going to do. From that place, and don't decide until you get to that place. From that place, decide what you're going to do and write it up. I don't believe you can get to clarity in your head, so it's really, really good to write it up. Like, this is what we're going to do. Get it written up. Now, that's the place that you decide from. Okay, now, here's the balance of this. Without emotion is not licensed to be a jerk. Okay, remember this part of it? It's decide ruthlessly, execute humanly. Okay, so now, this is where you get out your heart and you execute humanly. There's a truth that we need to put behind this, okay? Making tough and potentially disappointing decisions does not make you a jerk. I wanna repeat that one. Making tough and potentially disappointing decisions does not make you a jerk. You wanna know what makes you a jerk? Being a jerk makes you a jerk. So execute like a human, but don't let your, your nature to wanna to execute hum humanly take your decision and make it not the decision that needs to be made. So being a jerk makes you a jerk. So decide ruthlessly, execute humanly. All right, so here's the deal. This is the, like, this is the formula. Um, I print it up, put it in your house until it gets so ingrained in your being and in your soul and in your mind that it's just second nature. You decide ruthlessly, you execute humanly. 
I can almost guarantee, I'd be willing to put money on it. If you make a list of any of the people that inspire you, you want to know what you'll find is a commonality? They decide ruthlessly. And then they also execute humanly. 100%, they decide ruthlessly, they execute humanly. Now here's the deal. You don't see them decide ruthlessly. That's something that happens internally, but they still do it and then they go execute humanly. I believe that decide is the most important tool set, the most important tool that we have to get to what we want. So here's what I wanna do. I've got now decide is the first step in the framework. Casey, when are we done? You're, you're footing the bill for this meeting, so. We're done when you're done. Oh, no, okay, I started at 10 after, so I'll go, we got 10 more minutes. Uh, I wanna go five minutes of, like, this is my slide, but it's not about me. I wanna know what you heard. Um, so any one of those things, what lessons jumped out, what specific application for you jumped out, and or does somebody or anybody already have something that they're gonna go do this week, just as a result of what we talked about. And then in the last five minutes, I wanna give a quick, a quick summary of what comes after decide because there's a framework that I want to share with you. All right, y'all treat my friend good. Somebody jump in. Um, Brad, I love that you said the idea of listing people that you respect um, or look up to, and they pr probably execute this well, but you said that you don't see people make these decisions. So just because you get this framework in place and you start executing this and making decisions this way, doesn't mean that it's easy to make these decisions that you know will disappoint people. Um, so people still deal with how difficult that is but they do it anyways and they do it humanly. So that's just a good reminder for me that it's not going to be easy, but it still has to be done. Yeah, uh, reminds me, so Viktor Frankl in his book, Man's Search for Happiness or whatever, he talks about tragic optimism. And like you guys have the value of face life, we face life with optimism or, or I don't know the exact wording of it. Um, I think the important piece in that to recognize what we like to do as humans is we like to think that because we are optimistic, we can ignore and skip life's tragedies. No, 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 no. It still sucks, but we have to face it with optimism. And that's the, you're right. When you have to make hard decisions, it doesn't make it any easier. It just makes it right. And it makes you a leader. I love it. Thanks for sharing that. Laura, right? Yep. Thanks, Brad. Yep. All right. What else? So I'll go. Uh, this is, I mean, probably Casey can tell you one of, I mean, your content on this, when I actually first saw it um, months ago, it, it's literally stuck in my heart. But um, I think for me, it's, you know, that I tend, I hate disappointing people. I hate, I'm such a people person. Most of us on here are, I mean, most humans are, but the thing that just keeps sticking with me is, again, I think you've said it three or four times, but um, the disappointment will fade, but the right decision won't. And how many times that I've just done things, I've delayed things. I uh, worked in ministry where it's like, I knew I should have let some volunteers go at different points, but um, I stuck and every single time I ended up having to let it go. And then I had the damage that um, my indecision left. And so for me, it's getting to a place of remembering that um, the damage that my indecision leaves is way worse than just making a, making a decision, moving on, and then knowing that the, the disappointment will fade, but that you can face yourself and then other people can face you when you make the right decision and you do it at the right time. You know, we've all looked back and have you know, learned from it, but for me to continue moving forward and making those right decisions, um, I just always have to remember that it balances um, the uh, the weight, you know, is way worse than just doing it. Yeah, so. the, uh, yeah, thanks for that, Tara, right? Okay, yeah, so that reminds me, I was in a mastermind just a couple of uh, weeks ago before this whole corona thing really hit and got serious, and um, we were we were talking about something along the same lines as one other person was disappointed in some results that they had got or whatever, and one of the guys in the group said, I'm surprised that you thought it would be easy. And it was really telling to see the different perspectives because one of them's like, oh, this should be easy. And in the context of this, oh, I should never have to disappoint anyone. And the other one was like, no, I just expect that that's what's gonna happen as a part of my life. That way I'm not surprised when it happens, nor am I afraid of it. It's like, oh, that's something I've got to deal with. So I love, I love that perspective. 
All right. Anybody else? Anybody have anything specific that they're willing to share that applies to them? Maybe something that they've been um, waiting on or they're like, oh crap, there's a decision. I'm totally waiting on that and I should go make that decision. And or anything specific that you're like, I'm gonna go do this this week. Um, I have one. My husband and I put some money aside to put in the market and he's been waiting for the market to go down and go down and go down. And um, so last night I was like pretty much make a decision or don't put the money in right now. So we put all of it in last night and uh, it went up this morning. So it was definitely, um, you know, I was just trying to figure out the best time, but it was like, again, make the decision and put action behind it. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Thanks. Thanks, Courtney. All right. Anybody else or any, anybody have any, the other thing you can throw too is anybody have any questions where you're like, okay, I get it. But because here's the deal, when we talk about how we apply this, when you go to apply lessons that you learn, there's always the, okay, I get it, but wait a minute. It's the yeah buts. It's like, I get it, but I don't know how it applies here. Anybody have any of those where it's like, I feel like there's something here I could take and put into my life, but it's like, but I got some questions about how to do it. Brad, for me, um, the back and forth, the delaying of the decision for me, I'm thinking through every single decision, um, pretty much has to do with the delay is it, I, I know what the right, here's the point. I feel like I know what the right decision is most of the time, very quickly. Yep. I don't know if you guys feel that way, if it's a personality thing, but I can see it, I feel it, and I go, that's what my gut says is the right thing to do. And all of my delay is the disappointment. It's like I'm going through, I'm literally working through the collateral damage and just waiting, you know, and, and, that, and then I try to talk myself. The other thing I do is I'll try to talk myself out of it. So it's like, I know that was right, but yeah, but, and I do, and I, and so it's all, yeah, they're, they're, they're such a good person. And like, they didn't mean it or, or, or the disappointment to myself. That's the other one that, that it's not just disappointing others or disappointing to me and the decision I need to make is, you know, this is what Casey and I are going into Q2. We, we have something, Brad, this is perfect guys. This is decade of destiny, by the way. <laughs> that you decide 10 years in advance what you want ruthlessly and then you work backwards, this is the same stuff, um, was we need to get our spending, like we've just not been on a budget. And so I don't wanna be on a budget. Like I hate confining myself. So the thing we're doing this week, we're already in the process, but like ruthlessly on paper, like we did when we were 22 and made $28,000 a year combined, is that we're going to live like we are completely broke um, for Q2 just because we need to do it, just because we need to feel yep. that. And so for, I don't want to do that. So the disappointment is I, the stuff I will miss out on or the things we're not going to get to do and all that kind of stuff. But that's for me, Brad. That's, that's what it was for me. I love it. I love it. And so here's what's powerful. Recognize that it's happened. When I says train the brain to identify where you need to decide and then train your brain to decide ruthlessly, um, it's training your brain to be ready for that so that when it comes, you don't have to deal with trying to convince your muscles to go. It's almost an automatic reaction. So you're like, okay, that's it. I'm going. Like you want to put the systems in place and the systems in place might be that you have somebody else that you can be like, Hey, I've got a decision. This is the decision. So Casey, for you, it could be Renee where rather than you chewing on it internally, you train yourself to get it out of you and committed to somebody else. Like this is a decision over there now. For each one of you, it might be a spouse, it might be a friend, it might be a coworker. It's like, I feel like this is what I want to, ought to do. And it's going to get to a point of like, when, as soon as you're like, I feel like I ought to, that's say, I need to decide. Am I going to do it now? Am I not going to do it now? Am I going to revisit it in X amount of time? But decide and get it off your plate so it's not hanging around in your head. Because when it hangs around in your head, you've created, uh, you've created gaps between alternatives. That's where anxiety comes in. So let it come in, decide, get it out. Um, and so it can be, so it's a great question, Danielle, is it a process alone or with another human? It doesn't matter only that the process happens. So I like, for me, I like to use, I've got a business partner and I like to be like, Hey, here's what I'm thinking. And then I can sit on it to see if anything else comes up where it's like, Oh, that was a knee jerk reaction, but I'll decide like, this is what I think we should do. Chew on. It's like, yeah, it's the right decision. And then label the disappointment. In fact, so if you can get to the point of like, yes, it's the right decision. Yes, I will be disappointed so that you don't confuse the disappointment with maybe I'm making the wrong decision. When I had the conversation with my wife, here's how it went. It went, hey babe, I think we need to move. Um, and she was really mad. I'm not, I'm, mad's not the right word. She was disappointed and she was frustrated. She's a human, I'm a human, right? Anybody would be frustrated. 
And, uh, and then I went into, after I left that conversation, I went, like, well, maybe not. Maybe we can make this thing work and it'll be okay. Maybe I'll do this. And then, and then here's what hit me. This is where this whole thing came from. I went back to her and I said, okay, I have a question for you real quick. Um, are you disappointed or do you think this is the wrong decision? Because there's two different things here. If you're disappointed, I can live with that. If you think this is the wrong decision, we should have a conversation. So as you're talking and working with other people, that's a really great way to distinguish. And even as you're talking to yourself is, am I disappointed? Great. That's one thing. Is it the right or do I think it's the wrong decision? That's another thing. Two totally separate things. And to be able to label them as you're writing it out to be like, yep, disappointment, 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 still the right decision. Then you just got to go. Like there's not really anything else that, that you can do. You just got to roll with it. So being able to separate those uh, is, 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 I believe, really, really powerful. Okay, uh, I've got, uh, I'm gonna share this again. I've got four or five more slides I wanna roll through real quick. I, one of the things I'm gonna share is more details and more info on this, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, let me go back to here. Okay, so uh, decide is the first step. So let me give you this framework. I actually, so I wear hats all the time and I finally stopped wearing other people's hat and I made my own. So this hat is the same one you see on the screen. Uh, the framework is dollar. Um, and what I'm going to go through right here is another thing I'm going to give you as a PDF is this outline of what dollar means. This is the entire formula of how I believe how to get anything you want faster. Okay. And it goes like this. So D is decide where to talk about that. And here's the core principle. When you decide, let me go through all of them first. D is decide. A stands for act. L stands for learn. R stands for repeat. Okay. This is the process. We're doing it all the time. It's just more powerful if we make it conscious and make it intentional. When you decide, decide to start simple. Most people don't make progress because they either decide when they either don't decide at all for all the reasons we talked about, or when they decide, they decide this big old massive vision that there's no way they can do anything with it. So when you decide, decide to start simple. Phenomenal question to ask in here is what does the simple version of this look like? Okay. Second, when you act, act with violent imperfection. Most of the reason that people don't act is because they have confused thinking with acting. Thinking about it is not action. Uh, and or they act and they're waiting until it's perfect before they move forward. When you act, act with violent imperfection. If you are not embarrassed by the first version, you took too long. Um, L, learn. When you learn, learn without ego. This is where most of us fall down as human beings. Either one, we don't stop to pay attention. I don't know if there's anybody that watched The Simpsons growing up, but we're like Homer. There's one where he like keeps touching a thing and he gets hurt and he's like, ow, 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 ow. It's like, bro, you gotta, you gotta stop that. Like pay attention. A lot of times as humans, we just, we don't pay attention. And we like life is trying to teach us all the time. The way the world was created and constructed is that there is just truth about how things work. It's real simple. You either do it that way and you get the benefits and the rewards or you don't and you suffer the consequences, period. So pay attention because life is gonna teach you all day long. The other thing that we do is we take what life is teaching us and rather than letting it change us, we change it to protect us. One of those things will change either our interpretation of the truth or us. I'll give you a pro tip. If it's not you that's changing, you're doing it wrong. Okay. So learn without ego. And then R is for repeat. And when you repeat, repeat as fast as you can. This is like a daily thing for me. Like every 15 minutes, if I slow down on anything, it's like, all right, I either have not decided I have not acted. And by the way, a really good indication of whether you've actually decided is whether you've taken any action. If you haven't taken action, you haven't decided. And then learn and then do that as fast as you can over and over and over and over again. And that is what will get you to start to make progress. Anytime we stop doing any one of these things is where we halt our progress in whatever aspect of our life, whether it's with our kids, whether it's in our job, whether it's with whatever, whether it's for Casey as the owner of the business, um, doesn't really matter, doesn't really make, uh, make a difference. So, okay, so that's what I have. Here's what I'm gonna send you, okay? I'm gonna send you this sheet. Uh, I'll give it to Casey and they'll send it out, or Aaron probably. Casey doesn't look at email or anything, whatever, but I'll give it to Aaron. Somebody will get it to you. Uh, this sheet, um, I have a training where I go, I spend about 20 minutes diving deeper into the, you can't see me pointing over here, but if you could, I was pointing at the screen you're looking at. Anyway, uh, I have a training where I dive deeper into the principles behind this that I'll share with you. And then I also have a chapter in a book that I wrote that, that has a couple of questions that are very practical as you navigate through this. So I'll share that stuff with you. Um, Casey mentioned following me. If you want to follow and look at the shenanigans that go on in my house, it's Brad Martineau. Mostly on Instagram is probably the place to be if you want to see that stuff. And then I want to leave. I have two last comments. Number one, how this applies. How many people in here have kids? Okay. 
And then you also interact with other people. I, I, I just want to note, this was a thought that hit me in the last couple of months with my own kids. Um, to decide is the most important tool that a human can develop. When you have stewardship over other human beings, you ought to be helping them. You ought to be fostering their ability to decide. And this is what hit me. The fastest way that you can undermine somebody's ability to decide is to try and correct their decision before you let them act. If you want children that can grow up and that can learn how to make powerful decisions, when they say, hey, I'm going to go do this, and in your mind, you're like, that's the stupidest thing that I've ever heard. And it probably is. Short of it causing physical, like serious physical injury or whatever, let them decide and facilitate the learning process. And even if you're working with team members or whatever, your ability to lead through this is your ability to let somebody decide, let them act, and then you coach in learning. You don't coach in decision and action, you coach in learning. So coach in the learning phase. So that would look like you have a weekly sit down with each of your kids and you're like, cool, what did you decide on? How did it go? And you help them facilitate the learning process. What I recognize is that when my boys are like, hey, I'm gonna go do this. I'm like, hey, well, why don't you do this? Every time I do that, it shows them that I know more than they do and they're not capable of deciding. It undermines the very thing that is the most important skill that they can learn and develop. So that's just a little nugget that clicked that I thought would be important. And then uh, last thing is this, I wanna, I wanna talk just for a moment about why it's important, why I think it's important. Um, I believe that our decisions have ripple effects. And I believe that they are big and they are wide and they go far. I believe that the way that Casey shows up today on this call with you will fundamentally influence how you navigate the rest of your day and probably the rest of your week until you have another one of these. And I believe that the way that you navigate the rest of the day and the rest of the week is gonna have a fundamental impact on how the rest of your family navigates its day and its week. And the way that the rest of your family navigates its day and its week is gonna have a cascading impact on the people that they interact with. And I believe that down the road, here's what's gonna happen. Casey had this conversation one of you has a child that's going to be impacted by the way you show up. That child is going to go out and interact with their friends based on how you showed up and interacted with them. That friend at some point is going to get married to somebody else and is going to have a kid. The trajectory of that kid's life will be altered by how your friend's friend shows up in the marriage, which will be impacted by how your kid shows up to your friend, which is impacted by how you show up to your kid, which is impacted by how Casey shows up. Our decisions today and our ability to decide powerfully literally create, is creating and will continue to create opportunities for kids that aren't even born yet. I believe that's how we create change in the world. I believe that's how we leave an impact in the world is we recognize the power of our decisions today and the influence on people that aren't even born yet. All right, I got a bunch of other things I could keep going on, but I'm writing, uh, I'm, I'm spending Casey's money and he's on a budget. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Any questions at all, hit me up on Instagram or wherever. Um, I'd love to help. And Casey, thanks for having me on, man. Love you, Brad. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Uh, wasn't that the best ever? So thank you, Brad. Love you. You're welcome. Wow. All right, guys. Uh, Brad, I'll send you the screenshots. Um, what we do after this is we take it to Slack. Um, let's take this to Slack. And um, we, had two, uh, we had two team meetings today. And uh, this one was life-changing for me. It was really good. So let's take it to Slack. And just, you just let us know your number one takeaway. All the notes will be in Slack. And then I'd love Brad to be able to see uh, what your takeaways or thoughts are related to this and or related to uh, what B Built for This is, which essentially now after listening to this, Built for This is simply a decision uh, that we decided we are built for this and that creates influence and impact into the small business community. So um, love y'all. See you soon. Bye-bye.